Last time this combination was up on GT Sport, things did not go so well. We didn't take care of the tyres and ended up spinning out from the podium positions on the very last lap. But since then we've been on a great run where I'm almost on the cusp, at least I think so, of establishing myself as a regular top split driver here on this game. I feel so much more confident in my ability now and am determined not to make the same mistakes this time around. But Spa in the wet is in my view the most difficult challenge in the game. Many people opt out of this one, but we didn't. I decided as part of the ups and downs of any Gran Turismo career to take it on. My ability is going to be tested to the max here though, trying to keep this thing on track as I search for a third top 10 in a row here on Gran Turismo Sport. Hey guys, Eerie is here, welcome back to the channel and thank you for choosing to join me here for another video. If this is your first time here and you like watching all sorts of sim racing related stuff, then make sure to subscribe now and hit the bell icon as well so you get notified of every new video I upload and you don't miss a thing. So perhaps unsurprisingly you join me here in some pre-race practice. This race was on the same night as the race that you would have seen in the last video at Suzuka in the Group 4 cars. So as soon as that finished, there was no time to rest as I had to reacquaint myself with a different track, different car class, different drivetrain, and of course, different weather conditions. The ghost that you're gonna see up ahead there is the 10th place driver in the region for comparison, and I wasn't able to improve, probably unsurprisingly, on my best time of a two minute 43.665. Now, I usually let you know how far we are off the top 10 times here but that stat really isn't too much of an indicator here because you can be as quick as you like, but one mistake and it will be all over as we experienced for ourselves last time out. So I took my time, ignored where it was against the others and into the race session we went. Here's the lobby reveal then. And yes, we are once again in the top split for the fourth, I think, time in the row now. I'm really, really happy with that as we join the action here on our outlap. Usually after our first flying lap, we would normally come in for some new boots. But because the lap was so long and the tire wear was so low, I decided I was just going to go for it in this session. Not come in, which would give me time for three fast laps here. In total, one after another. Everyone else who came in would only have two because it took time to complete their outlap each and every time. And I felt it was wise to maximize my attempts here because of the track itself. Now we all know Spa is hard enough in the dry, let alone in the wet. And obviously the weather conditions increase the chances of a mistake. And that strategy for quali relieved the pressure off me just a little bit there. So I could get in the zone and just circulate and block everything else out like it was a pre-race practice session. So after putting in a 2 minutes 43.7 on my first run and then improving by 2 tenths there on my second run, we're here for the final attempt now. It was important for me to get this right as I feel I've let myself down in previous sessions and over the last few videos it just seems time after time I've just got quality wrong. The pressure was on as I didn't want to get it wrong yet again in this one and I pulled out one of the best laps of my life in reaction to this. That 2 minutes 43.296 put me up to 7th, 1 tenth quicker in fact than my pre-race practice time, which is almost unheard of since I'll be on more fuel here and although there's only a little bit of tyre wear, it's still present, unlike the pre-race practice sessions. And we ended up after that being just 1.6 seconds off the pole sitter, who was incredibly quick and also in the meta car here, the Honda NSX. So happily, I took that time into the race. So here we are then in the race session. And as we get underway here, I'm not gonna to focus too much on the ins and outs of the race in this one. These races are less about the battles and more for me, just about keeping it on track. And you'll be surprised to hear that we'll be keeping it ultra conservative to mitigate the risk of binning it like I did last time out and bringing this one home. Now, I know that many people stay away from this race, often citing the challenge of driving in the wet as the reason for doing so. 
so I wanted to share a few key things that I do when driving in the wet. Now I'm not the rain master by any means, I'm no Schumacher or Verstappen, but I am okay. So as we go round, just note my throttle inputs and gearing choices. I'm really just trying to do everything I can to concentrate on traction here. Power slides may look, and let's be honest, feel really cool, but they're not the quickest way to get round a circuit in the wet. In these slippery conditions, traction is king. As I mentioned early on, and it really pays to just not floor it coming out of the slower corners. I'm often not at full throttle myself until very late, sometimes I even get to third gear before I put my foot down. So you need to be patient and you can fully get on the gas once you're up to speed and the car is pointing towards the next corner. To help this you can use the gearing, which is another important point. I try and stay in a high gear for better traction, less wheel spin in layman's terms, on the exit. But to rotate the car so that you can get the nose pointing down the track towards the next corner as quickly as possible and get on the power. I often change down to a lower gear mid corner which will rotate the car. As I say though I am no rain master but these things are some good basics that you can take away that should help you for next time this wet combination comes up or the one at the red ball ring. Any wet combination really. So we're going to rattle through as I mentioned the first part of the race here. On lap number two Coming towards the end of the Kemmel straight, I managed to get a good run on the car in front and try to make a move on the fellow Brit, but he's going to defend well and I wasn't going to put the race in jeopardy by going for a move there. The next bit of action was on lap number 3, the very next lap. We come under pressure from the Brit behind now, who wisely doesn't try too wide through Radion. He holds off and we manage to keep him at bay until the end of the lap here, where we actually eventually get overtaken into the final chicane. I saw him coming though, anticipating this move. We were actually pretty close to making contact as he slid his way through there, but thankfully there was none. And we are down to 8th place. It's not all doom and gloom though, because crucially, still pointing in the right direction and still in the race. The next bit of action here was on lap number 6. Francis is right behind us now and he started from the very back, he's making his way through the field. So when he came up behind, we just didn't fight that one. Coming down the Kemmel straight, I'm going to put on my indicator, stay to the right and let him through. Again, for those who are wondering why I did that without fighting, to reinforce, as with the last run out of Brands where I let another driver through as well, in my view you really have to think about your race and the bigger picture. It's just not smart to lose time racing someone who's clearly much faster than you. The outcome is already determined, they're going to pass you. So once you've managed to accept that in your head, the next logical thought is how we can let them pass with losing as little time as possible. Because any seconds we waste battling for a place that we're going to lose anyway, may well be needed and become crucial at a later stage in the race. And as always, you must always mitigate the risk of an accident, which is even more possible in this combination. So after letting Francis through there, we're now down to ninth. So after all that, we're entering the closing stages of the race in this one. We're going to stay on board here as I want to take just a little bit of time to reflect on what the last few weeks have been like for me because lots of things feel really quite different. It almost feels like a new era on the channel and I haven't had a chance with everything that's going on to sit back and take stock and share my thoughts with you guys. Now, a lot of people are leaving the game, whether it be for other games or whether they've just had enough of certain aspects of it, like the penalty system. But in complete contrast, I don't think I've ever been happier on Gran Turismo Sport. I'm finally completing at the level I believe I should be and it makes all the videos I did when I first started using the wheel, a link to which I've put in the description and will come up at the end of this video, is so worthwhile. These races almost complete the series, having documented my entire journey from coming last in races when I first got the wheel to this. My fourth race in a top split here on Gran Turismo Sport. So as I say, if you want to see where that all started and my complete journey from start to where we are now, it's all there for you to see, as I say, either at the end of the video or down in the description below. The mood around the channel has changed as well. Now, I always get really, really nice comments, which I thank you all for, but there are currently loads. It's just off the charts right now. 
and we're getting hundreds of likes a video in comparison to only a handful, sometimes even single figures of dislikes, which is incredibly important because it's such an endorsement to me that I did the right thing by documenting my entire journey, bearing everything, my warts and all, and just being me. And I'm just so grateful, as you know, for the support of each and every one of you. So thank you so much. But back to the race you would have seen on the last lap here, Calderon was six tenths behind us as we crossed the line. Every instinct of mine was to floor it, but you just can't in the wet. I needed to avoid lighting up the rear tyres, making me slower. He wasn't close enough down the Kemmel straight when we went through there for me to defend. He almost got alongside though at Bruel and eventually got past coming into no name. But again, I'm happy here as we come across the line to take 10th place. Whilst it wasn't action packed, so it may not have been the most exciting of races, that is exactly what you want from a wet race. And you guys know I show you every single race pretty much that I do, and sometimes, as we all do, we just don't have exciting races, and this was one for me here on Gran Turismo Sport. But again, just to re-emphasize, I'm happy because not only did we finish without instant unlike last time, but this finish, was my third top 10 in a row. It also gave me an opportunity to take stock and chat a little about how happy I am with everything right now and to thank you guys. So every dark cloud has a silver lining as they say. I'm really starting to feel more comfortable at this level now and that I really belong. Not in the top top split of course but I feel like I belong at least at the table now. I'm sure the wheels will come off at some point and we definitely come back down to earth in a big way in the next video after falling into the hardest lobby yet. But that makes it even more important for me to just try and enjoy the experience and ride whilst we're here, and I really hope you guys are too. So until then guys, this is going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did please do hit that like button, and make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. Thanks again so much for watching though guys and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.